In this jungle guide, I want to talk about one of the most important stats that you do not pay attention to when you look at your post game. Remember, the whole point of League of Legends is to get to the Nexus and defeat it. But in our way are towers, and I've been noticing this hilariously depressing trend lately. You know, I was playing a bit of top lane as one does to become better at the game, not playing one role. And then all of a sudden I see my mid laner and my jungler with zero damage to towers while I have 20,000. So the point of today's video is to show you how and when to hit towers and to make sure you're maximizing the stat. And if you look at your post game lobbies and your losses, have a look at your damage to turrets. I guarantee you, you will have zero or very, very low amounts. And the jungle tip of the day for this particular show is to go ahead and make sure you are hitting a tower as often as you can with the windows provided. And the whole point of this video is to highlight when and how you can do this and what happens when you don't. So first off, in my coaching VODs available on Patreon as well as signups, I was noticing this trend with one of the players I was coaching where he would get these absolute huge leads and you'll see some of the highlights of those games now and he would have huge damage, huge KDAs, all the stats you want to be able to 1v9. And then you look and you see, well, he was defeated. And then I go ahead and have a look at his post game stats and you see zero damage to turrets as graves. And here's the thing, when you go for a bad gank and you die, now you cannot, you know, push the wave out, decompress it and take a plate. When you make a bad play or a bad sequence and you're not able to secure the Herald, you lose that, you know, 1500 to 2000 damage you can activate on a tower as well. When you overcommit to dives, when you make counter jungling errors, when you simply don't push waves out that you should, when you simply don't hold waves that you should, you lose the ability to stop them dealing damage to towers and you lose the ability for you to do damage to towers. And this metric is the most important thing that you need to focus on in jungling in the current meta. Pushing the map means hitting towers, taking towers, and getting closer to the Nexus as frequently as you can. I mean, why is Babu so legendary at playing Scion in that way? Because he does a hell of a lot of damage to towers. Why is Hellbreaker so OP and broken at the moment? Because it makes you do a lot of damage to towers. The question isn't always how do I do damage to towers, although we will cover that in this video. It's why do you do damage to towers? And even in losing game states, if you can create a pressure release valve by forcing rotations, as well as opening up the map for counter jungling, invades, and better vision control, you simply provide yourself the best opportunity to make the right plays to win the game. And you would have seen pop-ups of graphics when the Graves made bad plays and he didn't hit towers when he could have. And this has a snowball effect, a negative effect on your ability to carry games because you're not getting everything that you deserve for the way you've jungled. At the same time, if you're making these mistakes on your own, well, you don't really deserve to win. Despite your KDA, despite your damage, you can have the most gold. You can look at the post game history and say, you know what? My teammates sucked. I should have been able to win this game. And then you go into the game and you see that, well, you could have done so much more just by hitting a couple towers. So I decided to go giga deep in research because obviously not all junglers are created the same. Not every Every jungler class can hit towers at the same capacity. Not every jungler, you know, is able to just rinse them doing whatever they want. It's the reason the new Rengar Q is so broken and why that's being nerfed. After 120 pages of replay research, I focus on a couple replays to show you exactly what I mean. Now in EU West, we didn't have quite the tower obsession that the Koreans have, but most of the Korean games where there were high KDAs, good wins either from behind or ahead, and I will link all the match histories to the games I'm going to cover in the description, they were doing damage to towers in the top 0.1% of their champion. So that means even if you're playing Evelyn, if you're playing Zac, if you're playing Sejuani, of course, Rek'Sai, Rengar, you got your typical Graves and Kindreds. Whatever champion you're playing, the goal is to do as much damage to towers as you can as your champion allows, to be in that top 0.1% of damage done to turrets with your champion. So let's jump into some high elo highlights just to show you when they hit towers and what they look for, because it's not always the same. And with junglers, it's not something you're going to focus on early. So you're always making that up later in the game, in the mid game. So the tower damage you do get needs to be opportunistic, needs to be reliable, it needs to be guaranteed, and it needs to be intelligently done. And you would have seen first rotation, the Rek'Sai gets a gank off top lane, cuts her clear short, goes back to her jungle, Fiora TP's back up, we kill her again. We're not looking to push plates just yet because the time invest here would compromise experience and pressure around the map at this moment. But we are looking to prime our lanes for plates by simply pushing and denying and getting an experience advantage, sowing the seeds of our tower destruction, if you will. Right, mid lane doesn't exactly go the best. We do move straight out of base to cover it. We take the Raptors. We hold the midway from the enemy, absorbing that experience, getting a lead ourselves, and preventing them from doing damage to turrets. And if you will look at the match history for this game below, you'll see that the gold graph wasn't in favor for the Rek'Sai's team, which means even if you're behind, even if you have negative pressure, there's no excuse really to do zero damage to turrets in a game. Now, all we're looking to do here is get fed, right? If you're fed, if you can do things, you can obviously hit towers. So using that good outside in rule that I covered in the previous video, we make sure we get good ganks, we push the waves out, we look for some counter jungling, some other plays we can make, we reset again, and you'll notice no damage to turrets at this point, and that's quite common with certain junglers in the early game. You're looking to have high tempo, move around the map, 
yeah, maybe you've hit a plate once or twice, but really in the first eight to 10 minutes, you're not exactly slapping the cheeks of the turret necessarily. We use that to make sure we can get a good invade using our Gallia ultimate. We kill the enemy jungler, we secure the Herald, we probe the map a little bit more, and now we look for tower pressure somewhere. And of course, if you watch that Herald vs. Dragon video, you'll know exactly what I mean. In this case, we look for 2.5 to 3 plates, that's obviously in the mid wave, and we activate the Herald. Boom, 1800 odd damage done to a turret. We move using that pressure to get counter jungling done on the top side of the map. We pressure top lane again, burn a flash, we do some Krugs, and we repeat gank. Now, this is where the tower damage really comes in. Of course, as I said, you might have hit some plates somewhere else in an earlier game when you're stronger. You might have hit the Herald in a different lane, so you've got, you know, 3k damage already. But the Rek'Sai is going to do more damage than anyone on her team, and she has a mid lane ADC and a bot lane ADC, and that tells you how much pressure she's going to have from this moment forward. And that's what I mean by pushing the map. Not something that's always activated early, but from the latest stages of the early game into the mid game into the late game, are you hitting the towers when you should? Are you spanking those plates when you need to? In this case, we take whatever plates we can while the Fiora TPs. We know the Graves is on the bottom side, so it's definitely something we're looking to do. And their whole team responds by taking the bottom side turret. So of course, you know, as I said, in losing games and mismatch games, both junglers are still looking to hit towers and do tower damage in high elo in Korea specifically. It's really a statistic you should be focusing on. Look at your losses, look at your wins, and look at the difference in your damage to towers personally. I guarantee you there's a correlation between the amount you do and your victory. Now at this point, what the Rek'Sai is doing is what I call shadowing. It's basically when you have someone that can split push, you've got a bit of fog of war, you kind of expect someone to maybe collapse on your side lane. So you do some counter jungling, you do some vision control, you're ready to set that mouse trap for any laner who decides to randomly show up. Now, if they decide, hey, I want to go mid lane as a foursome and have someone splitting top lane and ignore the Galio and you're here shadowing, well, what could you do? Well, you could rotate and try to do something mid lane, of course, but you can also apply a huge amount of pressure by simply pushing that tier two. And if someone shows up in the process and you're fed because you did everything else properly, you just kill them. That's the point. You want to get to this point in the game being fed. And for that relative content, well, look at the entire channel. As always, look for good angles of approach to make sure you are absolutely destroying any disrespecters of your position and, you know, carry on farming afterwards. Now, the point of this isn't to illustrate, hey, look, you can hit towers while split pushing. That's why I'm not focusing on Hellbreaker. That's why I'm not focusing on Rengar or Scion. You still have to counter jungle. You still have to farm. You still have to join your team for objective fights, especially when you're down two dragons like the Rek'Sai is in this situation. Now, if you have to give up the dragon, give up the dragon. If you have to give up the scuttle, give up the scuttle. People need to give things up when they need to give things up because you can still farm, get experience and get leads and then set traps afterwards like they do here. And from this, the team is joined. The Rek'Sai doesn't ditch and go farming. The Rek'Sai doesn't ditch and go base. Your team is with you. You have numbers. Push a tower, hit a tower, take a tower. Now, in terms of raw strategy for this game, in terms of focusing on the statistic, nothing really changes in that regard. They fall back to take a Baron and as a team group together, push waves and hit towers as a unit. If you're not split pushing, that's what you need to do. And I think it's a very good idea to focus on that when you're playing in low elo, because very frequently a lot of players will simply fall back to, you know, farming Krugs and Raptors. Their whole team's pushing by themselves. They die and now you can't hit towers. And again, that stat will show at the end. So let's jump into a second Rek'Sai game where we actually focus on a second Herald as well as other action to make sure we can get tower plates whenever we can early. These are different triggers than the previous game of when you can actually hit towers. And the Graves from the first example can really pay note to these sort of concepts because he has this opportunity, he just didn't take it, or he, you know, face planted and died. In this game, we have a different scenario. Obviously, first blood nonsense and shenanigans early, but Leeson gets a kill, which means he has a long sword in the first rotation, which is hugely valuable. Do not deny this. However, Rex is able to have a good clear look for a gank in the top lane. They win a 2v2 back to base. And again, similar plays, but different player and different concepts in terms of when we hit towers. But the one thing that is consistent is they don't hit it in these first couple of rotations. But good shadowing, good counter ganks, good bottom lane dives, good counter jungling, good vision control, making sure you have the lead enough such that when it is time to go smack some towers, we are primed, juiced, and loaded up in itemization. Now, another thing to think about as you're watching the Rek'Sai do some more bonking and getting a dragon afterwards is kill conversion ratio, making sure that when you get kills and have numbers advantage, you are taking objectives. So in the event you do this in a lane, hit a tower. In the event you do this in the river, take a dragon. If there's nothing else up and everyone is dead, push waves and again, take a tower, hit some plates before you fall back to farming your jungle camps. Now, once more, we are looking to use the Herald as our first initial play, the first tower damage, the first secure, elevating the game state. It's a fast paced game, but sometimes it's very important to hold before you release a slingshot. So after Herald, a nice dive on the now, we kill him. We now push multiple plates before getting it down to two and a half, three so that we can activate the Herald. And yes, like the previous game, that was the first situation where we went ahead and deliberately had a tower. Obviously, you can smack a plate earlier, as I said, but you don't want to waste too much time early trying to hit one or two plates, even though it's easier. You can give that solo to your laners if possible. And when you do that too much, you're opening it up for enemy junglers to counter jungle you, hit equal and opposite plates 
boys and maybe even get a couple plates themselves while hurting your laners. So think deeply about tempo and when it's appropriate to hit those out of plates early or simply waiting for that maximum herald play. But that's just your pre 10 minute herald bonk, you know, that's not going to give you the 5 to 10,000 or plus of tower damage that we're really talking about in this particular video. Another good opportunity is when laners, you know, make good plays or there's a diveable lane in the mid lane or the bottom lane afterwards, use that pre 14 to just go bonk a plate, even if you didn't necessarily affect the gank or the kill. Ideally, we do. But if you can simply push them away and help take a plate or two with your mid laner, that's good tower damage. That's good gold income for both of you. That denies a wave. And now you can carry on about your business. In essence, I guess stop jungling like an ostrich. Stop AFK farming and looking down. Look up, use your F keys, click on the map. What towers can I hit today while also ganking a lane? Careful not to overstay. Make sure you make the plays you can. If the enemy team is not going to rotate and yours is, you have numbers. If the enemy team does rotate and yours don't, you don't have the numbers. Play the coin flip in terms of how fed you are. Know your champion, know your limitations. But the goal is, as you can see from the speed run now, and this is very important, we're controlling the bottom side where the objective is. There's no Herald currently. We're making sure we control our camps, try and steal his. We're pushing the map. And now you see the thing is, it's not always the damage you physically do yourself. It's the damage that you allow to happen by doing these kinds of plays, this kind of pushing the map jungling. If I'm controlling this, forcing rotations, pushing the enemy jungler out, forcing them to send two or three to me, my ADCs and other laners can simply hit the towers as they want. Go and deposit those coins with Boris and of course get stronger itemization and then lower ELO games when you do this simply by letting them hit the towers themselves. They get maximum stat checking and in low elo, that's all they're doing, right? They're stat checking each other. So why not give them the best opportunity to do that with some free money by playing pressure? So yes, you don't get credit for the indirect tower hits that you grunt, but it is something to think about when you think about this video as a core concept. As we enter these mid game phases, what we had in the last game with Volibear just could not do anything was because he didn't do this. He didn't focus on hitting towers. He didn't focus on drive buying lanes that are push and just hitting it a few times to make sure we can secure it. Rek'Sai does that, uses the lead, uses the map pressure that they have to get into to the jungle, good angle of approach, help Jinx finish the mid lane tower, we open the map up even more for ourselves. Now to kind of bring this full circle as the first example showed, the enemy graves didn't do the right place to hit towers, but let's fast forward that game a little bit, look at the graves here. Flanking, trying to be an assassin, not focused on the tower whatsoever. The team made plays, had numbers advantage, and he decided to sit in a bush and try to flank for kills. Look at the Rex in a very similar situation. We make plays because they ever commit, we have numbers advantages, we're able to push the mid lane, I'm going to join my team and hit a tower. And if you happen to be a high AD threat, it's absolutely huge that you do this. Rex IQ being able to be procced on towers was one of the best buffs she ever got, and this is why. This is why it's so good, but if you don't do this, you're wasting basically a part of her kit. And Graves is just Graves. And now to close this video off, I think we need to talk about the second Herald, and I don't know why this is purely ignored and memed. Why? Who started this meme that this is a terrible objective? I'm sorry I killed you guys again, farmed your whole jungle, have a 2-3 level lead, and now there's a Herald that I can take that helps me push even more towers, or even sync up with a Baron. No, but I read and I saw on the internet that the Emperor did nothing wrong, 42069 triple X told me that the second Herald is a meme, so I didn't take it. Come now, my friends, you can use it with the Baron if you want. You can simply use it as a split pusher. If you happen to be that way inclined, you can be a Shivana, a Diana, and your team sucks. Hey, take the second Herald and use it to split push while they kill your team. They're not going to do the Baron here, and even if they do, they're going to lose an inhib. It's a great way to kind of offset negative plays when your team are a bunch of dodos. In this case, you can use it to help your team push while you secure an objective and then rejoin them because, again, you have a huge lead. And let's face it, even your little Voidling eggs as Rex, I could probably kill the enemy Lee Sin at this point. And now, likewise, standardized macro, make sure you get the Baron and push out the rest of the map. Don't go farming, be with your team, yada yada. Same old spiel that I've given you for a very long time. And again, the match histories to this will be linked below, plus a few others that I found showing you the top 0.1% of damage with their champions and how that impacted the map and their ability to close quickly. This is what separates the Chad junglers from the junglers who dwell in swamps. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you hit like and of course think about subscribing because no one's subscribing and I kind of want to reach 200k just for a little bit of ego flex and to feel like I'm making an impact in this world. If you want to know how to actually use the Herald properly in these particular situations, click the video on the top right. If you want to know what the outside in rule is and how to actually jungle like a human being, click the link in the bottom left.